Hi guys, welcome back to NITT channel. Um, so today uh, we are going to talk a bit more about. Um, so we have Edric and then uh, DS and of course myself. So today we're going to talk about um, like how to each relationship, uh, each MBTI type. How do they? Uh, how do myself? We how do we view relationships? How like love relationships? I'm sure a lot of people will want to know. You know, like, um, like if you are ISFJ, you know, or you are ENTJ, or you are ENFP, you know, how how do people, how do you interact with your partners? So we start off with DS first. So DS is at ENTJ, right? Yes. Yeah. And ENTJ is very uh, uh, focused. Or we the NI will will tell us that okay, this is the correct partner, and. Once our NI says this is correct, we are able to go. So what we will do is that we will uh, think of what we can do to win the person. Mm -hmm. in, in this case, I see. Mm. I see. What about you? Okay. Uh, I don't really have a love life story to tell. So, mm. so, so, so we understand right now. You are currently currently going through a bit of the love life, right? So, <coughs> so what do you think about it? Uh, I think it's interesting. Uh. It's a new feeling that I never felt before. Maybe because of the FI thing, then mm -hmm. I'll, it kicks in. Uh, then it will always be like something like, oh, I never feel this before, I never feel that before. Kind of thing, right? You never feel this before, meaning this is the first time that you like a person, is it? No, like infatuation is a common feeling for me, but uh, like being obsessed over someone is a very common thing for me. But more of like, like truly feeling the understanding love and all this kind of thing is a, it's a new rare concept for me. Uh. Oh, I, I, but, yeah. but then you see, uh, I think, uh, all of us must have fallen in love before la. When we are falling in love, huh, we might defy our MBTI types, you know? Like for example, let's say an FI dominant person might suddenly want to share a lot of time, they want to do a lot of things for the other person, that is not FI actually. But that's because they are intoxicated by this chemical hot love, right? Or, 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 or toxic or whatever you want, you want to call it. So it, it, it is very difficult for you if you do not know the MBTI of that person in the beginning because they will not do things that are typical sometimes it's only until the feeling wears away right that you start to see more of the real person I think isn't it so? Mm. For, for me last time I used to I used to have this 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 girl that I go on girl no. <laughs> okay this, this lady that, that okay. I, I used to fall in love with I think she's more of an N type she's an introvert N type uh, uh, very introvert and yeah. intro I, I N uh, I N something I N something P la. oh so she's N E user la. yeah okay yeah. so I N something P so like very flexible you know like when you go and meet uh, sometimes she the timing are uh, not like more I have to be very, must be very flexible type you cannot cannot like if I say meet her 12 o'clock uh, she will come at 12.50 or 12.50 or sometimes like 1 o'clock so it must be her time one so sometimes I wait there and then oh. and wait and wait and wait sounds like an INFP I oh, yeah. think P people tend to be uh, not punctual <laughs> <laughs> no, because because of the, uh, of the set of connecting functions that cause them to be P's man. so it could be an FI trait, it could be an SE trait because uh, they, they they are always drifting away, you know, they kind of thing. So they don't have they, they are unable to keep up with time, that's also possible. Mm -hmm. So the P people I realize they are they tend to be not punctual, they tend to uh, be more forgetful, a lot of a lot of traits. Uh. This is also why right J parents uh, have problems with P children because they these P children are not like them you know? and J parents want to have children that are like them. So in this case, I think you're not very compatible with the yeah, that person. Yeah. Uh, so so it ended up really there. We, we ended up break, breaking. I mean breaking up is like oh I mean like we didn't even fall and we didn't even fall in love with each other. Uh, and, you know, just going out, you know, going out and then yeah. So yeah. so this this was my love life and then I decided okay no I'm not going to fall. <laughs> so do you know your match or not? Like what, 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 what would be the correct match for ISFJ? It depends on what you like man. Or uh, like for example, as an ENTJ, I value other people who also have a sharp logical thinking. So which means to say, right, 
I, I would like a person who may also have TE as a function. And it would be good if that person also had NI because NI people when they when they talk they can actually understand each other quite quickly. So this makes uh, 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 a good match to be either an INTJ or an ENTJ. But having another ENTJ is is like too much already. It's like your is like having a challenging yourself, you know, that kind of thing. So I think a good pairing is usually an E with an I because you will balance each other. And so your parents, Edric, are your parents E and I? I think both I. I think both are I, yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that's also okay. La. Both If both are E's, it could be quite challenging because both also like to go everywhere, different place, and all things. It can be very draining, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I personally think that an introvert and an extrovert is the best combination. Okay. Yeah. So, Edric, what do you, what do you I mean? You are uh, ENFT. I yeah, think you need to talk louder. Yeah, yeah. ENFT, right? ENFT, so, yeah. yeah. So ENFT don't don't like to be bounded by books. Yeah. So let's say if I'm dating someone or I'm seeing someone, for example, if I feel restricted by the partner, then it's a no go for me. It's a huge red flag for me, right? They're like, I'll, even if I really like the person, right? If I feel restricted at any point for my own freedom, right? I I will never go for the person. Yeah. So you you you, you like to be you like to be free la. Yeah, I'm free la, Like what you call the 自由自在, yeah, so, yeah. so so DS, what do you think? What do you think about this kind of this kind of trait? You know, ENFP. You know, the, is it, it would that be hard for them to find partners in the future or? Uh no I, I I I I I told you I have a lot of uh, ENFP associates yes. and uh, people that I know. Right. Mm -hmm. It turned out that they are uh, very happily married mm -hmm. and they are in a committed state. They, they can they are actually either married for a very long time with children or they are with their partners for a very long time uh, although there might be some uh, inherent problems uh, like they are quarrels and all things but that I do not know because the other partner could be of an incompatible type mm. but I think that once they are in a relationship or they have uh, pledged their love in, in a way they, they seem to be a, those that I know of uh, at least the ENFPs are able to uh, follow through, I think, which is a good thing, right? Mm. Mm. So, Andrew, what, what do you think? Let's say if you there's really this girl that you really like, and, and, and really you feel like, oh, you know, she's the correct one, will you? Uh, are you able to throw away your key, your freedom, and then you know, be with this girl? I think to some extent, definitely, the sacrifices uh, I will make, uh, you know, for, for love or whatever, but, but uh, if I still feel like I say 50%, uh, I, I cannot feel more than 50% of uh, restric restrictions on me. If not, I'll feel very, if not, I myself will feel very sad mm. and depressed. Then I'll feel like I'm in a toxic relationship. Uh. Mm. Yeah, so I mean, a bit is okay, but not so much until the level where my own freedom is like totally yeah. restricted. So, so if, if you have a girlfriend that suddenly asks you about it every day or every hour, message you where you go, you know, uh, where are you? I think that's a very tight but yeah, you feel very, very, very yeah. restricted. Uh. Very restricted. But but if every day, day also, what about every day? Every day, every day is fine. Every day, yeah, like once a day is fine. But just like not every hour, or every minute, then you update her where I am, that kind of thing. So, so that, that kind of like controlling kind of relationship. Yeah, yeah. That I can't, I can't handle that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But for ISMJ, funny thing for ISMJ, ISMJ people tend to be eight. Like, you know, you tend to more. You know, what are you doing? You know, so I, 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 I will be like eight. Hey, you know, how is this person? I would want like a daily update at least. Oh, yeah, I, I think that makes sense uh, because because uh, I am just thinking from the point of view of an ENFP, right? Uh, they, they don't text each other and th things like that. To me, uh, the relationship is non-existent, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if, if a person does not uh, text another person back, I unless there's valid reason for it, I would think that the person is no longer interested. Is, yeah. is it logical to think that way? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there's something every might want to look into. Mm -hmm. uh, unless you already have a mutual understanding right before, right beforehand that uh, you are the type that that may take time off for three to four days. The other person needs to really trust you on that, mm -hmm. and the other person can accept that. Or the other person is also on a very low maintenance one, so to speak. Then maybe then the relationship doesn't work. Mm -hmm. What what about I? INFJ versus with e, uh, ENFJ, right? ENFP, sorry. 
INFJ and ENFP. Hmm. I think it will be uh more taxing on the INFJ. Oh yeah, why is that so? Because I think I think any type of relationship with the ENFP can be a bit challenging uh, unless uh, uh the ENFP has matured in a way that they are able to stabilize. Mm-hmm. Mm. So it is really the 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 work will lie more on the ENFP to to try to fulfill the promises, you know, to to the INFJ. Is that correct? Uh, you see, uh, you you ask me, I from the MBTI point of view is correct lah. But because I'm an NI user, right? I also tend to believe in things like soulmate, you know that that kind of, <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the kind of very fuzzy, fuzzy type of thing like soulmate, twin flame, you know, you know what, whatever you call it. Yeah. So I believe that regardless of what your type is, you might have a soulmate, and then once the soulmate arrives, right, regardless of what type or incompatible, how incompatible you are, it's gonna make. It's gonna happen. So, uh, so in a way, I have two answers, lah. The MBTI answer and the mm-hmm. NI answer. So, it depends on how you look at it, lah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, because for for from ISFJ point of view, if I were to look at the ENFP, right, uh-huh. I would think this person is in, uh, unreliable. Mm. Unreliable. Un- unreliable. Sorry, unreliable. And and I feel like it. This this person like playing with my feelings like that because F E people I would think like eh, why you know this person like really a pain more the kind of thing my feelings I would think you know very very scum very jian ren you know kind of thing you know if people right at the beginning they they actually know the M B T I type of the person then they do some research they can actually mentally prepare at least yeah, uh, for yeah. some of the challenges ahead yeah, yeah I think I think it's a very good way to, to know at least um, um, a bit more about this person before you even date the person. So but then the thing is knowing the person's type is not enough because a, a lot of times you just know oh, this person is E then this person is S and all that. It doesn't work that way. You have to know the cognitive steps which is why we are always talking about S, E, N, I and all that because mm. you actually have to uh, analyze the MBTI type according to cognitive steps not by the alphabets itself mm. 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 so we've come to the end of this episode uh, we hope you enjoy our content talking about the different love types you know so obviously there's other content on our channel so make sure you check those out if you're interested in more content uh, please click here to subscribe please click below that's the red button to subscribe and also make sure you like this video and share with your friends about what's interesting and what maybe you have taken away from this video so um, don't forget to uh, tune in to our community uh, channels also for to find out more about uh, yourself and maybe we can help you more personally in your in your own life also as well. So for the guys, if you're interested in chasing the ladies, you know, mm-hmm. right, you can also tune in more to our channel because we'll be doing more content about that. Especially I know guys like to look at this kind of love video. So make sure you tune in. And I'm Edric, uh, today's guest also, and I'll see you guys next week. Peace.